So maybe you're considering or ready to install Lutron smart switches in your home, but the thought of turning off your circuit breaker, ripping out existing switches and installing new ones sounds intimidating. And I agree, it was like that at first for me too. But after changing out many switches, I wanna take you along and show you what it's like when I'm changing one of my switches. My name's Eric Wielander and today we're gonna swap out a single pull switch in my master closet with a Lutron Quesada smart dimmer switch. All right, so first we need to shut off the breaker. Okay, so now the breaker's off. Jumping in to clarify two terms that I use in this video that you might not understand. The first is the breaker, and I'm talking about the circuit breaker in your home, which cuts off electricity to that part of the home where you're doing the switch insulation. And I'll talk about in a minute how you can be sure that the electricity is off in that area where you intend. And of course, you can easily test that just by turning on and off the lights with a normal switch. And if it doesn't work, then the electricity's off. But you can do some more thorough testing as well. The second thing is that this is a single pull switch, and that means that there's one switch controlling the set of lights. If you have more than one switch controlling the same set of lights or single light, that is a three-way switch, and if you have more than two switches controlling those lights, that's a four-way switch. So if you're getting started installing smart switches in your home, I would look to start with a single pull switch where you have one switch switch controlling a set of lights or a single light, those are gonna be a lot easier to start with than worrying about a three-way or a four-way setup. First things first, I need to remove this old switch. I usually then just like to do a quick sanity check of the circuit tester just to make sure that nothing here is actually getting electricity and we'll check again when the wires come out of the wall, but just safety first, you don't wanna electrocute yourself. And you can find a circuit tester like that at pretty much any local hardware store. And so now the switch is out, let's go ahead and check, make sure we're not getting electricity anywhere and we're good. So um, this would be beeping very loud if there was any electricity. Two wires come into this single pole switch here. There also might be a neutral wire in your wall. So you can see the white neutral wire here. In this case, the switch does not need a neutral wire, so it just has these two, and the Lutron dimmer does not require it. But uh, depending on when your house is built, you may or may not have neutral wires in your wall. Certain smart switches from Lutron and other brands do require neutral wires, so keep that in mind as you're shopping. I like having one of these screwdrivers where you can interchange the tips for doing switch things because it makes it really easy to flip between standard and Phillips because I find so often with these older switches, there's uh, a little of both. Okay, so we got the switches out of the wall, but now obviously if you try and move these with your bare hands, you're probably gonna cut yourself. So you need to get some pliers like this and then just straighten out these wires here. All right, nothing perfect. Just need them to be somewhat straight. Then we wanna join these up with these two wires here from the Lutron switch. So. I'm gonna go ahead and use the wire nuts that Lutron provided in the box and just screw those on nice and tight over the two wires and that'll twist it and create a, you know, kind of join those two wires together. And I just like to twist it nice and tight. You probably don't need to go quite as tight as I do, but I just, you know, caution, safety all that stuff in mind. Sometimes too, uh, I probably should have clipped that other one. You can kind of see there's a little bit of wire exposed here on the bottom, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, redo this really quick. Um, but you can see now how, what the wire nut did, it really twists the wires together underneath it. And now what I wanna do is just make sure that these wires are about the same length so that when they twist together, there's not any exposed at the bottom. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clip this top of this one just a little bit and the top of this one. These are all both pretty close, but this one especially is much longer. So just using a wire clipper here, get my focus of my camera to work. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this wire nut on top of here. And now because, as you can see, these are the same length, there's no exposed copper at the bottom. Um, of the wire nut, and that's good. 
So now that these are both on, I'm gonna go ahead and give them some electrical tape. But first, we gotta deal with this green wire. You're probably wondering what that is. That is a ground wire. So newer homes, you might see a green wire in your box here. And in that case, you wanna connect this with a wire nut, just like we did these, but to the ground wire. Um, in my case, the box is, is grounded and you know it's an older home, so it doesn't have ground wires. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cap this off. I just bent it in half here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just stick a wire nut on top of that. And now I'm gonna hit all these with a little bit of electrical tape. All right, so we got our ground, all our wires taped up. Now it's time to put this thing in the wall. Now one of the things you'll notice about any smart switch compared to a not smart switch is how much deeper it is. So you might have to really be careful about how you're getting the wires back in the uh, in the box here because you might have otherwise have trouble fitting this in there. Um, usually it works fine, but just you know be mindful of how you're putting your wires in there so that. Um, you make sure that you have enough room to put the Lutron box in. In this case, it's just a single pole, but there's some wires going to other parts uh, that are coming through here. So uh, it's a kind of a crowded box, so we'll see how this goes. But you just gotta put it in carefully and then, then just kind of push. All right, now if you're doing this, by the way, in a box with more than one switch, whether it's Lutron or not, these side tabs here uh, need to get torn off uh, one or the other, depending on, you know, so you can line it up with another switch. Uh, you just do that with a wire. Um, take, your same, take your same wire pliers and just turn them that way and they'll pop, our, pop right off. But in this case, uh, it's just one switch. We don't have to deal with that. All right, so we got our uh, switch on. We're gonna make sure it's kind of level. So that looks pretty good. Now we need to put on the Lutron switch plate over top of it. But first, I usually like to, in this state, just go ahead and turn on the breaker and add it to the um, house first, just to make sure everything worked. That way we don't have to rip off the plate if, if we still need to do some more work here. So one of the other details with Lutron switches that you wanna keep in mind is, is the type of light bulbs you use. They're not all light bulbs are created equal and a lot of the cheap ones will struggle with something like a Lutron dimmer. So I get these Philips dimmable LED bulbs. They're not Hue, it's just a Philips bulb at my local hardware store. Um, and uh, they seem to work pretty well, but just make sure you're getting a dimmable LED and there's also a Lutron compatibility checker where they list different lights brands and models that work well with their lights and you can check on their website before you actually buy light bulbs. And so you can see now that we have the breaker back on and we have the light bulb installed that the switch just works as a standard switch. It's not even connected to any smarts. It's just a light switch. So um, if you sell the house or for some reason your internet goes out or whatever, you're still able to use the light switches as normal. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go into the Lutron app here and I'm gonna go ahead and go to settings and then add devices. And then it's gonna get my hub down in my server closet ready to add a switch. And then it's saying, what do I wanna add? In wall dimmer switch. And then I'm supposed to just press and hold the on off button and it's gonna go ahead and add the device to Lutron, which will then add it to all the smart home systems that Lutron talks to that you have it set up with, like Apple HomeKit, um, Parents Closet, Main Lights. I am done adding devices. It's gonna go ahead and finish the setup. So now all we need to do is install the switch plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put this on. Now the Lutron switch plates, plates cost a little bit more money, but they look really good with the switch. And then you just go ahead and put this extra piece on top of it. And this way you don't see any screws on uh, no day-to-day use. And this just kind of snaps in there. 
There we go. Now, if you want specific wiring instructions for things like three-way switches with Pico remotes, Lutron produces way better resources for this kind of stuff than I ever will on that specific topic. So I'll link to their materials and videos down in the description below. And if you're thinking of doing a lot with your new smart home, check out a recent interview I did with Robert Spivak. He's a smart home consultant in California and shared a lot of great ideas on what to consider if you're starting a new smart home. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.